Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Hi everybody, Russ with My Hammers 11. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon. She made a when we put new content on. As always, I'd like to love your channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. Have I got a special interview for you today? X Hammer, we've had over 80 on the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure there's a whole playlist of all the X Hammers on there. But we've got a guy who made 89 appearances for the club, uh, scored six goals in across three seasons, helped us gain promotion in 92 93 season, was Hammer of the Year run up in 1994. Um, before leaving, he we signed from Bournemouth uh, for leaving for Blackburn three years later for £1.2 million. Um, I'm doing a little intro now because the first bit of the recording corrupted, so that's why I'm doing it for now. It is Mr. Matty Holmes. Enjoy the interview. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. And then obviously Harry, Harry went off to West Ham and I think he must have mentioned to Billy and, you know, take take a chance on this kid. You know, he's got a good left foot. He'll, he'll be a good sort of squad player and see how he develops. Mm. So that's how the move uh, started with us. I think it was six, 60,000 down to start. Um, and like you say, I, I joined, I think it was that August. I did most of the pre-season at Bournemouth that season. Then I got a late shout to come up to West Ham. Um and then, then play. So I didn't play many pre-season games for Bournemouth because I knew I was on my way somewhere. I think sure. they were talking yeah. about going to Swansea as well. I was going to go off to Swansea apparently and <clears throat> I spoke to the Tony Pulis had just taken over the Bournemouth first team. So I was going to go somewhere um, and then sort of Harry and Billy interjected and what a great move in the end. Wonderful. Different world. Different world. I can imagine, particularly from Bournemouth, Bournemouth to London more than anything, let alone West Ham. But I mean, obviously, you, you had your experience of playing at West Ham when you was at Bournemouth. Was it always, you know, we, we spoke very briefly before we started about sort of obviously West Ham and and Upton Park and all that type of stuff. So, you know, when, once once the, the call was made that, you know, West Ham were interested, was it always going to be? Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, without a doubt. Funny enough, my brother, Danny, my younger brother, who was most probably a better player than me at the time, you know, he, he had lots of clubs after him, Luton, Middlesbrough, uh, Bournemouth. Um, he was a big West Ham fan as a kid growing up. And, um, you know, I think I, I supported a lot of teams. I wasn't one. We used to go and watch Luton play and they had a good team in the 80s, you know, with your Steens, your Ricky Hills. And West Ham would often come down to Kenilworth Road and we'd watch the game. So I, I love sort of watching, obviously, my home club, but all different teams as well. I wasn't one of them. Um, yeah, so I, I knew sort of about West Ham anyway and how big it was because my brother supported them. And when the call came from sort of Harry and Billy to come up, it was like, oh, straight away, <clears throat> it's just a no-brainer. Um, and it, it was, I think it was a tough time for West Ham when I signed Rash. You, you'll obviously know that I think they'd just been relegated um, out of that division and the Premiership had just started so it was a real tough time for West Ham not staying in the Premiership when it was first formed and, and come in and I joined that that team then um, in, in the sort of first division then as such and um, yeah but coming into the building and, and seeing your Ludos and your Martin Allens, your Clive Allens and Potsy, Alvin Martin who was an absolute hero to me it was wonderful and i felt confident you know as a kid sometimes you go and you feel a little bit more oh, intimidated but for some reason i just walked through and i felt so at home and the first person i sort of met walking into the changing rooms at the training ground was tony gale <clears throat> and the first thing he said to me uh, was um oh i'm glad you signed you've got bigger ears than me <laughs> <laughs> I, I still see tony now and again now because he's at walton casuals uh, yeah. the chair there and um, Wimborne are in the same league as all casuals and I, I speak to Tony now and again and he, he's a brilliant character so I felt I had a great way Russ it was a great move yeah it was yeah and you're right I mean it was it was part of that I mean yeah to be fair, and, and to be honest I mean a few a few transfers in and out but you know there was a, a nucleus of players which you you sort of were there throughout your time at West Ham you know there was we'll go through them later on but we'll do it but yeah, it was there was a little bit of continuity going through and as you said Someone like Gailey just coming in saying, you've got <laughs> such a tight, such a wedge thing to do, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he's cheeky and he, he can get away with that, Tony. And yeah. uh, he's yeah. a great character. We had people like that in the building, real good experience. Um, some young lads coming through, like, you know, Robbo, I think, had just come in mm. out wide. Yeah. And then myself, Peter Butler, I think, had just come in as well. You know, some real good, you know, characters around, sort of like the older, experienced guys. Mm. It, was, it was good times. It was good. 
and you needed that obviously because obviously you know as you said you've just gone down so we needed the experience but a bit sort of of youthful enthusiasm to mix in as well and 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 to be honest it's, it's similar to when, when we've had successful times at west ham it, that's that's when we've done well is when we've had really good experienced players with a bit of youth thrown in um and so you know, obviously that's that season we went up um and you know with, with clive scoring that second goal against cambridge united um yeah. so that must have been sort of justification for you for moving as well because you thought actually we've actually gone up and then next year you're going to be a premier league player that's some sort of rise to stardom yeah it's it was it was a funny sort of thing because i knew when i joined it was about being a squad player i had mm. to earn the right because the you know kevin king was was out wide and robbo had just come in and them two were unbelievable that yeah. season <clears throat> you know the amount of assists and, and goals they created and i think king knows he scored a couple of good goals as well it was going to be hard to get into the team so you know i was patient i was one of them i just sort of sucked in <clears throat> the experience and i think billy and harry sort of knew that they'd sign me you know to be a bit of a cover but also you know get a few games in and, and provide a little bit of quality as well but also maybe one for the, the future um sort of bring me through um, so i was really patient that year um and i don't think i played an awful lot of games <clears throat> and i played i think i played a couple of games actually in centre midfield as well uh, i think leicester away i played and i think cambridge possibly or sort of oxford at home i think i played centre midfield um yeah. and a couple out on the left and yeah and it was just about me absorbing and learning from your, your alvins watching the way they train um and pots his consistency in, in training in games and sucking all that experience in and, and just learning and yeah you might as we finished i think runners up to newcastle yep. you know, dead points dead points with pompey uh, on 88 and that like you said extra goal uh, last game of the season was vital to sort of get us over and get into that newly formed premiership with them it was you know a different world monday night cameras you know, monday night football and it was live on telly so give the club a great exposure and also the players as well yeah, and get yourself. I mean, that following season, I think you played, I think you played forty odd games that next season. Um, so, and and obviously with with you know that that season there was there was somewhat of a change of manager, kinda. Um, and obviously with Harry at the helm, as as we said before, you know he was the one who saw you score when you was a fifteen year old, peering for the hint. So you must have thought, although although you signed with harry and obviously bill was was the manager yeah. harry yeah. being the, the the manager now you must you, you personally must have thought oh i might get a few more games now because he's 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 on his nurture me from 15. yeah i think the first season was right i think billy was still in, in yeah. charge yeah yeah, yeah. So, the, so the season i had sort of like the 40 games i think billy was still in charge and harry had a big influence obviously with the team yeah with that's billy. right and um I, I think I, I love working with Billy in that, yeah. you know, he's joining the training sessions as well. He was fit for the most of the lads. It that's, was that's, what that's what they say, that's what they say with him, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And that was most probably my best season most time, that first year in, in the Premiership. And um, I managed to get some continuity. I think I actually broke my finger in one of my first games. I went up for a header against Wimbledon and I landed and I think my finger come out of joint and <clears throat> I had to come off. And um, I, I had a few games... Um, out for that to recover then I got back in the team and it just seemed to sort of all fall in place and like we said earlier like that worth ethic of our team was so good you know, you know Butts and, and Bish in midfield or, or Mad Dog you know in there you know get moving the ball quickly you know at the back you had Alvin Gailey or, or you had sort of Potsy you know Timmy bombing down the right Dixie you know, it's just there was just so much fluidity and um you know although i don't think you started great that season we seem to get into a good run i think maybe late september yeah. um, we had quite a few games unbeaten we drew a few <clears throat> but we got into a good routine and it was getting harder to beat we adjusted quite well um yeah and so that was my i think my best season out yeah. of the three that i had there and um fortunately i could become um hammers runner up so i think trevor trevor That's scored the goals that. yeah <clears throat> yeah and i love playing with trevor up there he, he works so hard um yeah and then i think that following season rust then it, it was a little bit tougher for me uh, and then sort of uh, billy left and then harry sort of took over um and as we established that first season the premiership you know we need to kick on get a few more players in and then the competition got you know, even more uh, intense, which is great, great for us. And um, I think for some reason that second season, we, we struggled a little bit more. We only just sort of really survived with them last 
two games. You know, I think we had to play Liverpool home and, and Man United home, and we needed, I think, the th three points at them two games. You're thinking, oh dear, you know, after getting beat at Crystal Palace, I think third game before the finish, you know, we had to get three points out of them two games, and obviously we, we beat the Liverpool. But that was that was a tough season for me. That that one before I left for us because I was sort of in and out. I lost a little bit of form. Um, I don't know why. Um, can't put quite a finger on it, but uh, maybe expectations. Um, you sometimes need to come out of a team <clears throat> and then, you know, reassess yourself and then get back into it. And I had a really, really good finish to the, to the season in the yeah. end. Yeah, I mean, you scored the Liver in the Liverpool game and won the 3-0 game, wasn't it? And, the and then you were obviously part of that famous one all with Man United, which which cost them the title. We had, we had Mickey on a couple of weeks ago, actually. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah, good old Mickey, bless him. And... Um, <laughs> And that that that's not a last a bad last first game. No, no, last game for West Ham was it? Sort of that one all, you know, Luke costing, you know. And then and then and then obviously, so Blackburn win the title, and then in the summer, you go to Blackburn. So <laughs> I know, crazy, crazy. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the finish that season was brilliant, but we, I think if we, we dragged ourselves out a little bit of a hole. Yeah. We give ourselves a fighting chance, and I think we had, like we said, the, the Crystal Palace, Liverpool. Um, and Man U game to get three points and we thought oh, Crystal Palace away surely we can get a point out of the three games and we'd be alright but we got turned over there I think we lost 1-0 and it was a boiling hot day I really remember it and um, <clears throat> we didn't play great um, and then so I think we come back into training and we had a midweek game against Liverpool home under the lights at Upton Park which we know is very tough for any team to come under the lights at Upton yeah. Park and play us so you know, we sort of regrouped us, got us together and just you know, told us a few home truths about how important it was. And we went out there and they had some superstars playing for them on the night as well, by the way. It was incredible. And um, But we just got the early goal and I think I just shot it near post. And I think Monks put me in down the left and I managed to shoot through David James's legs. A bit lucky, really. <laughs> <laughs> they all count. They all count, Matthew. They all count, yeah. man. They all count. There's an, yeah. And there's, there's not many players who can say they scored against Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, True. it's one of those things where, you know, you've, you've, you've got that on your CV forever. But, I mean, you yeah. know, as you said, we, we mentioned about the team spirit and, and stuff. It, you know, with, with people like, you know, towards it, it was people like Monk coming in and stuff like that. Yeah. Training must have just been, I mean, we've had Monks on, we've had, we've had most of them, but, you know, they all say how much they just enjoyed training every day with the right giggle and it's funny. Yeah. That was it was brilliant. It was intense. Caught the tackles yeah. he used to go in. The unbelievable Marshy and Monks and that and even Alvin and Rushy. He, Rushy was a right bruiser. He was solid and <laughs> oh dear, there's a few little dust ups here and there. And now it, it was that's what you needed. You needed to be yeah. really on your game in the week, ready for your for your Saturday week, midweek game and um but yeah, it was a, a lovely balance, and lovely gel to the squad, even though we sort of, you know, had to sort of fight our way out a couple of years and, and get there. You know, we sort of believed in ourselves. We had some really good characters that you could trust to the man to your left and right to you know, make sure we, we got the job done and sort of survival. Because it was a period where, you know, West Ham had been up and down for a couple of years. Um, so we knew it's you know try and survive, try and stay, but in, you know excite the fans, play your football, which was obviously important. And the fans, I don't think you know I might be wrong, Russ, but you know not win, lose or draw, as long as you worked hard and played good football, I think that's what they demanded, and that's what mm. we tried to do. It's not a hard, it's not a hard thing to be to get the West Ham yeah. fans on board, you know. As long as you said, as we said before, you know, if 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 you lost the ball, as long as you're trying something, as long as you go back and try and win it back again, and that's all it is really. And I think that's and again, I think that's that's what's similar to to this team, to that to the team you played in is is there's that still there's that workman like mentality um, yeah. within the team, and and as you said, they want to put a shift in, and and as long as you put a shift in, it doesn't matter. It's not it's not your fault if if someone wasn't technically good enough to play, but as long as they tried, because yeah. every West Ham yeah. fan would, would have swapped their life to to be in that position, um, even once. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I remember many games where I swear we lost the game and away from home and they knew we put a shift in and you go across to applaud them and they'd be absolutely up on their feet, you know, giving them an ovation because they know that you, you tried that that day to try and get the three points for them and they went home happy. And I think we had duty of care, you know, people work all week and they come and watch the Hammers play and you're out there, you know, representing them because that's their weekend, you know, they... they want to see a good performance and, and, and a good result at the end of it at the end of the week.
Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, it's totally, yeah. but it's, it's, it's their escapism, isn't it? Really, I think that's, that's the thing that I think has, has been unfortunate the last sort of eight, still sixteen months or so is that you know there's no escapism. They can't go out to the well, they can get to the pub now, but they couldn't go to the watch the game on the Saturday, and, and they might have worked all week, and you know they have to sit in front of the TV and watch the game. So hopefully, as things are changing now, but it was uh, yeah. yeah, it was one of those, it was part and parcel of what to do, and it was uh, yeah. and, and as you said, you mentioned it briefly, but obviously. That sort of that middle season, arguably your best season out of the three, you know, hammer of the year runner up. I mean, what was that like to have been voted, you know, runner up hammer of the year, man? Uh, it's absolutely incredible. I couldn't believe it when I think uh, Pete Story had sort of said to me, uh, Potsy and Trevor, that, oh, you've got a report to so and so where the presentation was being held <clears throat> because you were the top three. And I was like, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I knew it had a decent season, but you don't think, well, you know, you're going to be sort of chosen by the fans to to do that. And, um, yeah, then I think um, on the night, I think they went third place, Stevie Potts. I thought, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a chance here. And then uh, Trevor had scored a lot of goals that season and had done fantastic. And then they announced me as runner half, and I was like, just absolutely delighted and over the moon it was it was brilliant and the rewards for a hard season I've been patient I'd waited I'd worked hard all my life to get to this point and you know patient in that um you know, championship winning team that got into the into the premiership and um you know all that time I'd sucked up and you know learned from people and and tried to improve it was it was a great reward to you know put something back and, and receive such an honorable um award yeah, no, exactly. No, it's very. It must be. Yeah, it's, it's to be recognised by the fans as well. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, yeah. sometimes people get sport writers or whatever, but the fans is the, you said the guys who are paying the money. So it's like it's yeah. it's uh, it must be an incredible yeah. feeling. When during yeah. your time, during your time, during your whole career, um, you know, who who was the, who was the the, the, t- the toughest opponent you came up against? Oh, toughest. <clears throat> um, I think when I was West Ham, it, we. I think the the fullback at Leeds, Gary Kelly. Yeah. I thought he he was a real tough cookie to play against because he was obviously quicker than me. So you know, I weren't the quickest, but I was quite sharp over sort of five ten yards. But when yeah. we were to sort of over ten yards, I was the slowest in the team. Five ten yards with the ball, I was all right. I can nip through gaps and that. Um, but Gary Kelly was you know just as quick and that, and I just had to keep coming inside all the time. And he, he knew. Um, what I was going to be doing so it's, he was a real tough opponent uh, to play against um, and I think in training Dixie most probably gee yeah. because he you know <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Like, he 50s you know I, was, I didn't shirk out too much but yeah he, he was a tough cookie in training as well yeah, but as you, as you said, they all we, you, you, it wasn't like just Julian. You, the whole team were, you know, quite I'd say quite strong players. You know, so you said Pete Butler yeah. and Mark Alvey and oh, yeah. they said little Mikey Marsh and stuff. They they like to all put it about, and you know, yeah. obviously Monks and Bish and people like that. Um, I, I think you know when, when obviously you know that that, that, that that Man United game in the in the sit and then close season, obviously Blackburn come calling. Was mm. was it? Were you looking to move, or was you happy there? And it was they came, and the opportunity came. They just won the title, and because obviously, yeah, because obviously, we, I like to in, talk about how people join. But obviously, yeah. leaving is quite interesting as well. It just came out of the blue, us. Yeah. I remember I, I, I'd come back pre-season, um, really looking forward to it. I think I was pictured with the new kit with Stevie Potts uh, <laughs> on the brochures of the of the club shot. So you know, I, I had no expectations about going anywhere. I was happy, you know, loving my football. Um, my wife had a really good job up where we lived, and uh, uh, she was settled. And um, yeah, and then I remember it was Frank Senior had. Um, come up to me on the training pitch after a session and said, um, oh, and Harry was by him and, and said, oh, just had an offer from Blackburn for you, Matty, you know, 1.2 million. Mm. And, um, you know, we'd seriously like you to think about it because <clears throat> um, it's a great opportunity for you. Um, so I was, like, quite shocked, really, um, because you think, you know, that sort of business would be done uh, quite early season, yeah. uh, not, not like three weeks into pre-season. So Harry sort of said, well, go off. You know, my immediate thought wasn't, oh, yippee-doo, you know, I'm <laughs> going for a million pounds. And <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. You know, when I've got so settled and enjoying yeah. football. And so he said, well, think about it over the weekend. And then I think Harry rang me up on the Saturday night. They told me on the Friday. So he rang me up the next day on the Saturday and said, what's your thoughts, Matt? And I said, oh, 
no, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to turn it down. I want to stay. Mm. And he sort of, I wouldn't say he was firm with me, Harry, but I think he made me realise that the club had got to a point where they'd done two years in the Premiership, stabled the ship. And I think he looked at myself as, you know, getting a million pound for. He could then reinvest that and get, yeah. you know, three players for me. <clears throat> so when I sort of listened to that, I thought, you know what? You know, am I going to be playing as much yeah, even if I stay? Mm. I sense that the management wanted to sell me. Now, if I don't, if I turn it down and I stay, all right, I'll, I'll prove myself, no issue, And because I've done it when I first turned up at the Hammers yes. and got me way into the team. Uh, but I just felt, mm, I think it's most probably time, time to move on. And, you know, West Ham then, obviously a different story. They invested the money and, um, you know, got a few players in. And off I went up to Blackburn. It was like, I think they were playing actually in the Charity Shield that weekend and they were in a hotel near me on the Sunday. Mm. <clears throat> so... Harry sort of told, said to me, go up and meet them. So I went up to the hotel um, where they're staying in Hertfordshire and I met Ray Harford and Kenny Dugleish and the lads were just walking down towards the coast to go off to Wembley and I spoke to them and, and um, yeah, it, it seems, you know, a real nice conversation, lovely people. Uh, I thought, well, you know, it's that next stage now, next chapter, yep. but a great time at the Hammers and, you know, hopefully they've got just as much from for 100 grand, you know, they're now got rid of me for 1.2 it's uh i've put good service in and enjoyed my time time to really make that move so off i went on i think the monday morning i was off up to blackburn and, and that was it yeah well i suppose it's yeah as you said it's opportunity and the fact that as you said that the h was like already sort of <laughs> already thinking about how to invest the money as you said that it's sort of the not the writings on the wall but as you said you know the the, the, the management have, have got plans to take the take a slightly different direction which maybe you might not have been involved in as much so yeah and, and, yes, and you know, still, you know, the fact is, they, you know, you're playing under Kenny Dalglish, you know, uh, uh, one of your heroes probably at the time. So it must yeah. have been, that, yeah. And that's fair enough. I mean, it's one of the, I mean, you played played 83 games, you know, 89 times for the club. It, you know, you, you had a good service, good service. Yeah, then. yeah definitely. Much. I think Stan Lazaridis had just come over from Australia yeah. and, and, you know, they had some, some really, really good players coming through. And, um, you know, for, for me going and them getting that money, it was, I suppose, a no brainer, really. And, mm. You know, the, the, the depth they had on, on them wide areas was, you know, for me to go, it wasn't like a major, oh, we've lost a, a big player. It wasn't that the case at all. So I could see, I could see, and that's football. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen Harry over the years since, and it's, you know, he's brilliant. You know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't really be, you know, where I got to. Course, and all. Yeah. <clears throat> so for that, for that little situation to happen, it was, it was, it was nothing at all and then yeah like you said right, going, going up there and working with sort of Kenny Dalglish you know I worked with him for about two weeks and he decided to take that famous job sort of upstairs and yeah. Ray Hart took over um, but it was a, just, a, just a different <clears throat> different culture in terms of the football they played you know I, I was asked as a, a left-sided player to sort of get crosses in really early and I know I did sometimes for Chappie or, or, or Trevor um, but the West Ham way was sort of like to try and come and play off the line. And we used to outnumber teams in midfield, didn't we? Like with Marsh, yeah. we the Butts, Beach Monks. You know, we sacrificed a little bit of width by outnumbering teams in midfield by little passes. Um, and, and going there was like a, a different sort of yeah, way of playing for me, you know, play, play it a little bit longer at times, you know, because you've got Shearer and Sutton who are mm. absolutely unbelievable players that score yeah. goals and they just won the premiership um so it was a, a different different culture in terms of football but as football you have to adapt and you have to sort of move with, with, with different styles and um but the lads there were, were fantastic really really good bunch and they were all internationals you know they there's no airs or races and made me feel welcome but unfortunately the move just didn't didn't work out you know how you wanted it to as you say yeah, that's football as well isn't it unfortunately sometimes you know things yeah. things happen and it's only afterwards you go oh maybe that one we had um we had, we had we knew the guy the other day who who came to us on loan for three months in the in the early sort of 2000s and um he was like do you know what i probably shouldn't have gone i probably should have come to us there really cause it, it sort of delayed my my progress in my career a little bit is oh fair enough you know that's the first time <laughs> the first, okay all right, fair enough but um and obviously gailey was still there gailey was at blackburn wasn't he so i think i think he just um it was that, yeah just, he, played one just season, left. he just went the other way yeah yeah <laughs> he'd gone and deserted me uh yeah <laughs> Oh bless him! Right, okay. Let's 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 go to your eleven, Matty. Says that everyone we've had on the channel, apart from Bish, actually.
actually. Bish didn't give him the 11 because oh. that's, that's Bish. You know, he's a nice He doesn't like to offend him. Um, H didn't give one actually because he was too busy talking about Bobby Ferguson in the, uh, in the late 60s and, uh, and Nigel Rio Coke. But everyone else is given an 11. So the idea is we put together an 11 based on the players that you played with during your time, your 89 appearances, yeah. obviously training and stuff like that. Um, obviously, the fans do it as well. So, you know, it's, it's just a bit of fun. So, yeah. We'll start off in goal. Now, I think there's, <laughs> I don't think there's going to be no, much debate about who's going to go in goal for the Holmes eleven. I'll be honest. No, that yeah, Ludo. I think even if you have a couple of quality keepers in my time, my three year time pushing him, you know, he, he was unbelievable. You know, for such a big guy, the agility uh, he had for shot stopping, distribution, um, such a quiet, quiet guy. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, such a quiet guy. Didn't. You know, say too much, but you know, just dominated, dominated his box and the back four just with his presence. Um, and I think we'd always, you know, hark back to that Man U game in my last season where he just it was him against really United, wasn't it? Really, you know, yeah. wave after way we played well first half, <clears throat> um, and deservedly took the lead. And um, but they just sort of wore us down. We was camped on our 18, and Andy Cole to this day he must be thinking, How did I not score at trick? Well, exactly. Ludo's. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, without a doubt, and also he got me the sponsorship for my um, Skoda. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, it's like, yeah, he's get you a Skoda. You get you a Skoda, <laughs> bless him. <laughs> it's either that or, uh, or, or obviously it was that on Dagenham Motors, wasn't it? It was either you got a Skoda or you got an Alan Ford. That was it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. But no, Ludo, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. yeah, lovely guy. Right, okay, put Ludo in goal. Let's go into defence then. A little bit trickier. Okay, who, who's your first defender then, Matty? Would you want to go mostly right back or left back to start? Uh, up to you, up to you, up to you. Um, should we go right back? Let's go right back. Across? Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the two most we stand out would be most we Timmy, Timmy Breaker, uh, or, or Kenny, uh, Kenny Brown. You know, Kenny would be more of a utility player that Harry would, and Billy would play him sort of all over the place in the midfield. Um, but I think, think Timmy takes it. Timmy is my sort of right back. He, um, I grew up actually watching Timmy as a as a thirteen year old at Luton. Luton yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. We used to come in on sort of the the, the summer <clears throat> camps and train, and and I'd remember him and um, Mitchell Thomas uh, would be training up at the Luton training ground, and we'd be kids on the other pitches watching them watching them train and play. So I knew about Timmy before sort of come to West Ham, and um, yeah, just the way he just used to maraud down that right hand side, and you know. Powerful and come up with the odds special goal, Russ, didn't he as well? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, strike, I think it? I think with Timmy, I think he was very much like like, like the modern day fullback now. You know, sort of now where it used to be defend the fullbacks used to sort of defend really. I think West Ham are quite unusual in terms of. I think I know he's going to be your left back as well. So, but those two guys would come forward quite a lot and and pop up with goals and and crosses a bit like sort of Soufal does now on the right hands on the right back position. Yeah. Sort of a lot of overlapping that Timmy used to as well. And uh, yeah, head of their time, head of their time, right. Okay, so put Timmy Breaker in. Who's uh, okay? We'll move across. Let's go to the centre half and move all the way across. So, who's your first centre half then? Yeah, this is tough for us because you know I've talked about Alvin, haven't I, in my pre bit quite a bit, and coming to the football club and seeing Alvin train. And I suppose you know, you've got to be honest, he was at the end of his career at the time, yeah, but the way, he trained, <clears throat> the way he trained and the quality he possessed um, it was just phenomenal, really. Um, and, you know, even in the games he played, you know, I always tell the kids now and I think about Alvin, you know, when the ball comes, you know, try and direct your header. And you see a lot of kids now, you know, they just head the ball and head it away. But every time it comes to Alvin, he used to try and just head it to a, a claret blue shirt. It was <laughs> not rocket science. <clears throat> um, but he, he was absolutely wonderful. And, you know, he, he would train as he played. He'd, he'd had a couple of dust-ups with the young lads. And you think, how in that experience? He's like, but he was so focused and, and mentally strong. And I suppose that's the career he had and why, he, why he'd done so much in his career yeah. over that time. Um, you now, I've also got, you know, Mark Reaper, who yeah. in my last season was absolutely solid. Um, I'm not too sure, Russ, when he actually come in to the building, whether he joined that start of that season or whether he come a little bit later. I think it was the start of that season. It was sort of this sort of League of Nations, wasn't it? It's sort of like, not League of Nations, Nations League, not League of Nations, so many different things during the war. Um, but yeah, sort of Harry brought in, like, they started to get the, obviously, because mm -hmm. yeah, that, that sort of time, the foreign influence was just starting to come in. 
<clears throat> the floor, in terms of players outside, yeah. so people like Reaper and stuff, who you might not necessarily have seen, you know, we might not have seen him two, three seasons ago, now was coming into the game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Reaper was sort of the first proper, I mean, Ludo, to be honest, but you know, Ludo was sort of, Ludo was Ludo, but he yeah, was probably yeah. one of the first ones to sort of noticeably come through from, from mm. off the shores, so to speak. Yeah, and he was strong, good header of the ball, blocked shots and, and decent passer as well. Um, so he sort of comes in contention. Then obviously you've got Potsy. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you know, some might say all right back, but in my time, Potsy played centre back. And yeah, did you? Some, someone, I would say so small, don't want to be disrespectful, but he's bigger than me, but <laughs> taller than me. But he, he's absolutely positioning and his, his timing and winning headers as well. Um, and quality on all, nothing phased Potsy. He was like, Cool as a cucumber. He was naming big games. He just sort of strut out there, do the business. And he was always, what, eight out of 10? Yes. <clears throat> really, yeah. really had a, had a bad game. Um, so out of them, sort of two of us, I, I think I'm going to go definitely for Potsy because he was hammering the year, I think, two of the three times. And been, yeah. they hardly missed, hardly missed a, a session. Um, so I'm going to put Potsy in one of the roles. Um, yeah. And the other one I was <laughs> toying on, so Mark Reaper, Alvin, or even Gailey to a degree. You know, Tony Gale, so calm and composed on the ball, um, brilliant in the dressing room. Um, so it's a, it's a tough one to decide out of them three, but I'm going to go for Alvin, Russ. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, so one of those guys who, you know, he, and I think people, people tend to forget with Alvin because, again, he was around for, you know, Double testimonial years and you know, twenty years, you know, man and boy type thing. But you know, he he came he came down uh, as a sixteen year old from from Merseyside and 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 yeah. just stayed and stayed here. Really, he just stayed. I mean, he's still here. I mean, his his grandson goes to my daughter's school in my oh. daughter's year at school. So, and you know, and still does the the Tom Bowler at the uh, at the school fate and stuff. Really? You know, our turns. You know, and so he sort of like yeah. became a, an adopted Cockney, didn't he? Bless him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, no, fantastic. And you're right, probably, yeah, towards he, I think he retired, it, it might have been the season you left, I think it was his last season at the club. So, what well, it was coming to the end. So, yeah, you saw sort of the tail then, but obviously, you appreciated who he was and, <laughs> and, and just the yeah. phenomenal yeah. Uh, trainer he was. Okay, so put Alvin. So, we've got Tim, we've got Potsy, we've got Alvin, we've got Gluto in goal. Left back, who's going to be your left back? Well, it's quite an easy one, Russ, but I don't want to be disrespectful to the other two that I'm sort of considered, you know, Keith yeah. Rowlands, who um, sort of followed me from Bournemouth, really. Yeah. Keith, he came over from Ireland uh, when I was at Bournemouth and made an instant impact and beautiful left foot, <clears throat> you know, very wiry. And, you know, for someone so wiry, you think he's not got much about him, but, you know, he didn't really lose too many one-on-ones as such, really. He was he was a great servant. And I enjoyed playing with Keefe. He could understand the game and, and play his football the West Ham way. Um, that's obviously why sort of Harry brought him in. Um, and obviously, Davy Burrows. Yeah. <clears throat> in that famous sort of three transfer coup, was it? Margie, uh, Bugsy and um, Chappers. Yeah. When we went up to Blackburn, all three same at the same time. We hardly trained together, and we went up there and won the game. It was, uh, yeah, but... I love things like that, though. I love stories like that. We had we had Neil Meller on, bless him, and and Neil Meller we'd signed on loan. Um, it was the season we'd gone down in two thousand two three. So yeah, oh, yeah, oh, two oh three, and and uh, yeah, we'd signed him uh, from Liverpool on loan, and. I think it was I think it was Glenn at the time. I think Rhoda was the manager, God bless his soul. And and he said, Oh, don't bother coming down because we've got we're playing Preston first game. So we'll pick you up on the way. So he picked them up at the at some service station at Preston or something like that. Yeah, ridiculous. But you know, then he's sort of like introduced to the guys, hi, and he was he was playing the next day. Um so <laughs> I love things like that. I love stories like that. No, we'd we'd hardly trained and did the three boys come in and we was playing at Blackburn, who would gee, they end up, you know, winning the league that year yeah. I think. And uh, you know, they were second the year before, and I think they were just having Ewood park the stand behind the goal, sort of revamped. Um, yeah, and, and you, you're playing against your Shearers and your Sows and that, and thinking, oh dear, we're not trained together. But what a great start we had. And yeah, he, he, but Bugsy was great. You know, I think he loved me playing in front of him because he used to come, come back and do his work for him as well and track back. And I wouldn't want to just stand out wide and, and, and you know, calling Bugsy off you go. I'd always try and yeah. double up help him um so he's great but yeah left back it's got to be julian yeah you know, he's 
absolutely legend at the football club. When I first turned up, you could see the respect he had amongst the players. All right, he had a few red cards in his time when I first come in, and but you knew what you get with him. You, you would suddenly get a 30 yard from the bolt top corner, and you'd see that in training an awful lot, Russ. You know, it wasn't just a, a fluke. You know, his left foot was like a one. You know, they used to say my left foot was decent, but. Now he was most probably another level, really, um, and to play to play in front of him, you know, was an absolute privilege because you knew behind you, not much is getting past him, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also you got some, you got someone to back you up as well on that left side as well, isn't it? So, but it is, you know, I don't know how many games Julian would get now in the modern day. Um, <laughs> have to change his with VAR yeah. and whatnot, bless him. But uh, yeah. yeah, absolute legend of a man. Um, mm. And he scored my first ever goal I saw at Upton Park. So it's always, oh, and it yeah. was one of his, it was when we mm. played Oxford United when we won 5 3, and Oxford scored after about 20 seconds or something like that. Um, typical West, <laughs> as my granddad <laughs> would say. Um, so yeah, we'll put June. Okay, so that's a, back, that's a nice back four in the goalkeeper. Right, let's move into midfield. Let's, let's, go, let's go right wing. Let's go right <clears> wing, <throat> right midfield. Yeah, that's that's a tricky one for us because you know there's there's a few players there you know like um, you know can play both sides really yeah. you know Mark Robson uh, I think was on loan at uh, from or Tottenham he was at Tottenham I think as a kid and I think he went to Plymouth and actually played against him when I was at Bournemouth for, for, against Plymouth and um, I always thought gee there's that little Cruyff turn that little sheen mm. that crossing ability and I think he had an absolute superb season the year we got promoted yes. from that old first division <clears throat> up um, so you know he comes across you know Martin, Martin Allen could do a job out there but I saw class Martin Moore as a centre midfielder and Mad Dog would you know, write, you know work his socks off up and down and the quality he had as well you know, a lot of respect for Martin. Um, but I'm going to go on that side, you know, for most probably Michael Hughes. Oh, <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> Michael nice. Hughes. Now, I know he's got a left foot, but he can sort of, you know, cut, he come inside a lot. On, when I was playing, I played on the left. Michael would play, you know, on the right. And he, he would come inside and hit his left foot shots. I think he scored a few goals or sort of coming in and doing that and linking the forwards. Um, really nice guy as well. Great quality. Uh, I think that I heard something recently that he was one of the most gifted Irishmen that they've produced. <coughs> um, and you could tell even in training, you know, his ability was second to none. Um, you know, and I'd love sort of playing Michael, even though he's on the other side. You know, sometimes I could make a run from left to right, and then as Michael comes inside, sort of slip, try and get in through the, the centre forward to the centre backs, and. Uh, yeah, he had that great awareness as well. So I'm going to go yeah. for sort of Michael. Yeah, no, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, I had the privilege of his. Yeah, he was he was over a couple of weeks ago, and so he came and did it. We did our interview face to face, and and mm. couldn't get rid of him. Couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> he started, started <laughs> chatting. He started chatting. It was just like, yeah, bless him, lovely guy. But yeah, um, and and, and in, in some in some ways there was sort of uh, I'd say. Uh, Relative parallels between you, the two of you, sort of similar, sort of trick, very sort of skillful players. But obviously, mm. you know, I'm, you know, and, and and as you said, maybe not over over ten yards, not the quickest, but that sort of just burst of initial burst of pace over those five yards, very in sort of you know in stature as well, you know, similar sort of height as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm short as yeah. I'm short as well. Mate. I'm, 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 I'm short as well. So, um, um, right, okay, we'll put Michael in. Um, well, we'll go across then. Let's go, let's go to the first central midfield player then. First central midfield, oh, hard again because yeah, it's a tough one. This because um, you know Ian Bishop uh, played with Ian at Bournemouth for a season. Harry bought him from Carlisle, I think, for thirty five thousand. Yeah. Um, you know, Harry had that knack of sort of, um, you know, getting bargains and, you know, Bish, you know, off both feet <clears throat> in that Bournemouth team that got in promotion. He was unbelievable as a kid sort of coming through watching that, um, you know, left foot, right foot, you know, passes, split in defence, you know, calm on the ball. Uh, just had that real, real quality. Um, so I'm going to put... Bish in there, not just that being, you know, that sort of background, but I think he deserves to be in there just for what he can create. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Very skilled. I think a, a slightly, slightly ahead of his time, I'd say, you know, in terms, he would still do a job in the modern game, I think, because he was just that, he could just pick out a pass and was just very skillful on the ball, you know. Particularly yeah. midfielders now, they, they have a lot of time on the ball and stuff, it seems. So, yeah, no, yeah. I, I love Bish, lovely guy. Um, I right, put Bish Wash in. Um, he'll love it as well, because anytime he's in, he's in one of these videos, he always likes it. So, 
<laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, not got much to do over there in the States apart from play golf um, and watch my videos. Right, can we put Bish Bosh in? Who's he going to partner in the middle? Partner, again, tough one. You know, I talked about Martin Allen, who some people might put in a wider, and he did a, did a job out wide a few times. And I think I was at the team a couple of times because Martin played out wide, and they moved usually across the other side. Um, Martin bring brought you, you know, that energy, that desire, that passion, um, and that quality as well. Um, the other one, Peter Butler, I think he he had an unbelievable impact in that promotion season along with Robbo and, and Kevin Keane out wide. Um, and, you know, he deserves to be in there as well, the little Yorkshire Terrier, you know, the tackles that he, he put in as well. And, you know, like to drive forward the ball, not just win it, you like to scurry forward five, ten yards and play. Then you've got sort of Johnny Moncur who come in my last season, <clears throat> I think he'd come from Swindon, Russ. He yep. signed Swindon yeah. and he had a good season the season before with Swindon I don't know if they got relegated but I think they, we signed him from there off the back of a good season um, um, you know he's little chops and, and then Cruyff you just couldn't read it could you he's, he's coming he's coming oh no, did, yeah. it's, it's happened and you know and he's passing ability but he, he's skillful and most probably didn't nowadays you sort of maybe play him as a 10 more of an yeah. attacking sort of driving driving forward rather than the centre midfielder like in the old days right. <clears throat> yeah so he's a real real tough man for us between those three guys but i'm going to most probably go go with john monker oh yes oh well, has that made you happy oh yes. <laughs> No, no, any any of them, any of them. <laughs> Pete, Pete Butler was the first. I, I have, um, you know, there's certain players that you have this sort of affiliation with. That's when you know when, when you when you supported, you know, when you went to see football. Pete Butler was the first ever player I met when they used to, when we used to, used to the older uh, junior hammer Chris birthday parties in that little school next door and um and a footballer and Pete Butler was the first person I ever met and uh, and uh, obviously I've had the privilege of interviewing him and uh, he he's got an in, an incredible you know he's he's currently in Liberia um he's the Liberian oh. team manager and he, he lives in George Weir's complex because he's obviously wow. the president, you know, and he, he's, he's managed at Botswana and oh, incredible. Um, but yeah, John, yeah, love Monks and the, yeah, and the two of them midfield as well, you know, Monks yeah. and Bitch, you know, you got, you know, it's, it's a combo, it's a combo which was served us very well for many years, that combo in the midfield, bless them. Um, yeah. right, we'll put Johnny in, uh, he'll be happy and Bish. Um, okay, who's gonna go, who's gonna go on the left? On the left, um, and I've spoke about some of the players already on the sort of right, Russ, but, um, you know, I can't discount them as well. You know, Robbo can either, either play on the other yeah. side, personally. Um, you know, Kevin Keane, to me, definitely comes into that equation, putting him on that side or, or the side where he usually is anyway. When I first turned up, you know, I had a lot of respect for Kevin. I knew what he was about. Like, I, he was a footballer. You know when you go to a new club what the players are like. And yeah. when I walked in the building, I spoke about, you know, I was quite confident. I wasn't sort of overawed by it because you can't be because it's, it was a great club and everyone made you feel welcome. But, you know, with the Alpins and, and your Dixies and, and Kevins in the building, you're like, oh, <laughs> it's a privilege to be working and playing with them because they had a lot of, a lot of respect. And I think... Kevin, um, although I think he went after that season, I think he moved on. Um, I just think to me, he just gave the football club so much. He, he would drive with the ball. <clears throat> I don't know whether he was sort of, I wouldn't say underrated, but I just felt in training, the way he conducted himself, he's such a nice guy. You could, you know, could bounce off him and ask him questions and made you feel welcome. And that quality gave you on the pitch, you know, Nipped him with a few goals, important goals as well, over his period at West Ham. Um, and I just just love watching him play when I was sitting on the bench. And, um, you know, he could come inside, outside. He, he was clever enough to come and find spaces in central areas as well, off the line, and pick balls up and run with it. Um, and I think you'd want him in your trenches with you all day long, to be fair, Kevin. Um, but also, at the time, Matty Rush was coming through as well, Russ. You know, a kid coming through his jeepers and what, and, you know, physical specimen he mm. was, but could play as well. You know, the pace he had, I remember a game, I think it might have been one of the Anglo Italian games. He's like, just kicked the ball past this lad and just left him for daylight and got a crossing. We scored. And he, he was just, you know, if, if he had that, I don't know what you call it, you know, that consistency. Yeah. <clears throat> 
in his game. You know, he'd be in the team for, and I was out of the team because of Rushy, but if he had that consistency to, to, to be able to do it for 10, 15, 20, 30 games, he, mm. I think he's gone on to you know, bigger and better things. Definitely, definitely. I totally agree. Totally agree with Rushy. But again, something like that, he's, you know, I think, Hopefully we're getting, we're getting Matty on soon. Hopefully, uh, another Matty, <laughs> and so um, I, I, I think I think for clearly someone like yourself and and a lot of the and pretty much everyone you've you've mentioned, I think you, you know it, it, you loved playing loved playing the game. I think Matty but Matty was really good. I think he was a phenomenal, ferociously talented player, but I just don't think he had the love of the game as clearly you have and how eloquently you talk about football and how you remember games like this. And I think some, it works for some people. It's not for other people. But, yeah, yeah he, was, he, had, he was an incredible player. Incredible yeah. potential he had on oh, Rashi. Yeah, definitely. And, and also the other one that comes into the equation I thought about was, you know, Marshy. Yeah. <clears throat> Mar Marshy coming that famous three signings. And, you know, again, is he more of a centre midfield player, you know, on on his day? But he could come inside, similar to himself, I suppose, not yeah. blessed with great pace, but he could pick a pass out and drop one in, you know, on a sixpence and and play. And he had that real carefree attitude, Marshy. You know, one day in training, he'll come in and, you think, oh, is he? And then suddenly he'll just go straight through the back of you. And you think, Marshy, what are you doing? He's like, <laughs> he was just, <clears throat> but his talent was incredible. You know, coming from Liverpool, you know, you, you've got to be a player to sort of come through the system anyway. Um, so him coming off the wide area in my team, you know, would still, still be great to see him in there. Um, but I suppose I've got to make a decision, Russ. You've got to force me to make one. And I'm going to go with Kevin King. Yeah. No, I think it's a fair, and, and and obviously, you know, Kevin and Potsy obviously still heavily involved in the club in in the, in the coaching of the kids and stuff, and and the under twenty threes and whatnot, under eighteens, and yeah, no, I totally agree. I think I think you I think that's a good I think that's a good selection. I think Kev on the on the left, yeah, lovely guy, Kev, top man, had a right giggle with him. Actually, though, but to be honest, mate, honest, all of you lot, all of your era, I think everyone I've spoken to, you know, even 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 when we had Mad Dog in, and you know, we get him to do a little bit. He'll phone me up no, and he'll say, Russ, do, do you want do you want me, do you want Martin today or do you want Mad Dog today? <laughs> and I always say Mad Dog and I always regret it as soon as I say it. But um, yeah, no, Kevin. And, I, and the thing about them two, Mad Dog and Kevin Keane, is I never, and well, they both obviously mentioned it, but they would they would drive in together from, from you know, the Brentford area. And it's like, yeah, really? It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, chalk and cheese, but they just, yeah. they were just really good mates. I love it. I love all those stories. But uh, okay, we'll put Kevin in and that's our, and that's our four across the middle. Nice, right up front. Who's your first, who's your first forward? First forward, um, I'm going to go with Trevor. Yeah. Russell. It, it, it was a time where, you know, Trevor was the main goal scorer at the time. Um and I think that first season in the Premiership where I started to break through, um, I saw, saw Trevor at the um, reunion for the last game at the bowling. Yeah. And I uh, spoke to Trevor and he said, oh, did you realise you got the most assists for me that season? And I said, oh, I didn't know that, actually. <clears throat> I didn't re recognise that at all. And he, he sort of laughed, said, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he, but he's work great, Russ, wasn't it? <clears throat> not not yeah. just, you know, in, in terms, he would miss goals and chances for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, was he prolific, prolific, you know, but he, he would wane with goals and he would unravel, you know, unravel centre-backs, mm. you know, he would work them, he would chase. And that's the spirit, I think, of that little <clears throat> spell and era we had. Um, and, you know, you could link off him. So if I was playing against a Gary Kelly and I was struggling on the outside, I knew I could come inside and flip one into Trevor because he'd show, he'd recognise that maybe I was struggling a bit. So he had that intelligence as well to show up to feet and uh, link play. Um, and I, I think he had a lot of respect of, of all the lads. And if he wasn't in the side, we'd like think, oh, God, we're going to miss him today. And I think when you when you think that of a player, um, you know, you, you've recognised that, you know, he's highly regarded. So... He's definitely going to be, you know, quite an easy selection for me, Russ, in my team. Yeah, no, I love love old Trevor, and he's, he's and he's uh yeah, was, yeah, he's his birthday, his birthday a few weeks ago. It was his birthday a few weeks ago, Trev. Lovely, and obviously he's over in uh over in Norway, and he bless him. Um, yeah. I love it, love it, love it. Right, okay, put Trev in. Um, and who's he going to partner? Who's going to partner? Last last piece of this uh, Holmes eleven pie. Well, there's, there's, there's a couple there, Rush, you know, Lee, Lee Chapman, you know, I know he sort of come over on loan and he did a job for us. He did a job, I, scored I, some goals, yeah. 
yeah, uh, and it was a period where we needed, you know, we needed Lee. And I knew as a left-sided player that he'd pull up far post and I could sort of, you know, hit a diagonal up to him and he could yeah. then pull back in and we got runners like Martin or, or, or Bish Butts Monks coming in to score. And he was he was a great outlet for us. And um, I know he sort of lacked that <clears throat> bit of pace maybe he's in the latter stages of his career, but... Now he, he did a great job for us, and I love playing with Chappie. And um, yeah, with, I seemed to know sort of when he was going to pull off and when I could put that longer ball in and then float one in. Um, the other one, obviously, you know, he's a legend at the football club, isn't he? Tony Cotty. <clears throat> now he he went uh, went away when I think I come in, and then he come back from Everton. <clears throat> so I didn't have a long spell with Tony, but you could just see, you know, the quality he had in terms of poaching goals. Sniffing, know when to be in the right areas. Yeah. Um, you know, lo lovely guy. You could speak to him. You know, bounce off. You know, if you have any issues or bits and pieces. Similar to you know Alvin in a way. Um, and you know his goal scoring record for football club and what he did was incredible. So he really deserves to be in there. Um, but I'm going to most probably go with uh, this one, Russ Clive Allen. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was, he was, yeah, I mean, exactly. He scored some absolutely critical goals for us, didn't he? This time, yeah. and and my first season at the football club with Clive, um, that's the first time I've sort of seen someone. I know Clive was at the end of his career and he had that great spell at Tottenham, scoring them record goals, and yeah. he came across to us and. And the, the, his work ethic, you know, on a, on a Friday, he would say, Matty, mate, can you just serve some balls? So I'd like to serve some balls to him and, and he would be like five yards from the goal, just, and I'd have to serve it. He'd volley, left foot, bang, 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 about 10 balls at a time. It was like a little tennis machine, bang, 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 bang. And then over to the right-hand side, volley, 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 <clears throat> you know, and he would do that on a Friday, um, obviously before Saturday game, you know, just get him, you know, mentally focused. I'm hitting the goal, I'm in the back of the net. That's the first time I've sort of seen that type of thing, that individual sort of work. And I've brought it now into sort of, you know, my sort of upbringing, really? with the, you know, specialised, you know, forward work and, and bits and pieces. And, um, you know, I love playing with him. I didn't play an awful lot of games that first season. But when I when I did play, you know, he, he was wonderful to, to play off of. And, you know, he had that respect as well from what he'd done in the game as well. Um, so I think Clive Furry deserves to sort of be in the team on, on that merit for what he did for us for that spell yeah, and for that little bit of period. Definitely, definitely. And, and, there, and there's the team. There's the team. Wow. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Definitely a, definitely a European tour on the cards with that one as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> in all their pomp, in all their pomp, and you know, proper, proper wingers, proper wingers, Matty. Yeah. None of this, none of this clever stuff now. Proper wingers crossing it in for Morley to head it in, and Alan to pick it up, pick up the pieces and stuff like that as well. I like it. I like it. The game can be so simple sometimes, but we overcomplicate it, I think, nowadays. Yeah. But yeah, that's no, good. Matty, man, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know you've got to go do some training in a minute. I know you've got your training sessions. No, no rest for the wicked, even though it's Freedom Day. No rest for the wicked. That's what I like. Um, but I really, really appreciate your time, and I've really thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you. It's been lovely. Thank you so much. No, pleasure coming on, Russ, and thanks for the invite. And um, yeah, great to trip down the memory lane, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah, thank it's, you. it's brilliant. And obviously, thank you to everyone for watching. Uh, and for myself and for Matt, take care, everyone. Stay safe, wash those hands, get those jab appointments. Uh, come on, you irons, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Much love. Bye bye.